Mysore city, land of palaces, land of tourists looking to get an eyeful, land of wide open roads and unexpected amounts of green, land where gulmohars bloom and where pieces of history pop up in the most unusual places, traffic stops for example. So much of it abounds that everywhere you go are reminders of its grand history as seat of power for six uninterrupted centuries. That's pretty impressive. And so to my surprise was a lot that the city had to offer. I am speaking of course now of the East. I had come with let's just say moderately managed expectations. But perhaps I should have known that a city with this much history and let's face it these many dishes carrying its name had to have more on offer than that. Amongst the many things I was going to explore was of course the holy trinity of Mysore named Mysore based treats. The Mysore Dosa, the Mysore Bonda and some Mysore Park. It being early morning, I thought the dosa my best bet and my lari, I was assured, was the place to get some. It's a simple place that's been propping up its little corner for over 80 years. And as I meet Subamani, the lovely lady behind it and as a kind customer steps up to be my translator, the first thing I am told is that it's actually not a typical dosa that I am sitting down to. Namaste, Mount Kaldinda open again. That is our dosa speciality. It's there since 80 years. Ha. She is telling us the Mysore masala dosa is different. This Mailari dosa is different. They don't put all those things. Ha. And they will offer this co pure coconut chutney ha. along with that. Well, the crush should have given me a clue, and likely the action in the kitchen too. What makes their special then? The secret. <laughs> all right, and fair enough. I'll just grab a seat and see what the fuss is all about. And there it is, thick toothsome, fluffy and drowning in butter with fabulous fresh coconut chutney on the side. It's absolutely without question the find of a day, even one that's only just begun. I'm having two, no matter how laced with butter it is, and I'll tell you why, because it's that good. I did not think it could outstrip the hype. I mean, after all, how different could one dosa be from another? Um, my lari is the differentiator. I mean, it's fantastic. It's sort of like, in a strange way, I mean, look at it. It's a bit like a fluffy breakfast pancake meeting a terrific dosa, and it is delicious. It is easily one of the best breakfasts I've had in a while, and I can tell you, I've had a few. It's a wonderful hybrid, if an unintentional one, and from here on out, forget a la Mysore, I'll take my dosa, my lari style. And so, if not quite traditional, that's one off my list. The next place I'm heading to, though, assuredly is. Guru Sweets is, as most Mysoreans will tell you, the only place to step in and have some Mysore Park. Because despite its unpromising setting, it's run by the family that created the park in the first place. True story. My grandfather father was started in palace. He was a cooking in uh, Maharaja. He's uh, preparing uh, some like uh, sweets. So he says something you do special. One day they have started uh, some special item. Huh. They very uh, much very like uh, much. Huh. Then he's uh, he's call it as a Mysore Park. On that day huh. they call it as a Mysore Park. So yes, this man's great-grand or is that great-great-grandfather is the creator of the sweet we know as Pak today. And so you will believe me when I say that what they serve here is distinct from the kind you get anywhere else. Instead of a thick slab that's fairly solid, they serve theirs, positively melting. It's soft, it's crumbly, it's caramelly, drowning in ghee and... Gram food, sugar, ghee, turmeric. It's a traditional secret and also. Once again, who can blame them for keeping it? This is like no Mysore Park I've had anywhere else. Um, I've not been the greatest fan of it up until now because what happens is you take a bite and somehow it leaves this like coat, like this scum, you know, of just leftover oil in your mouth. Um, this just dissolves into sugar and fat laced happiness. I can understand having a bite of this while the Maharaja was as old as he was. But here's the thing, Guru Sweets, as you may have noticed, has a lot else on offer. Mr. Natraj had urged me to try the others. Their most excellent motichur laddu, their sugar-dusted gooey piece of pera, and this. It's a halwa made of pumpkin tandu roasted for a fine crust on top. And who knew? It's great. Really. If someone had told me even 15 minutes ago that I would be in raptures over a big pumpkin halwa, I would probably have laughed in their face. Um, 
this is fantastic. I do not know how much ghee they run through every day. I'm not sure that I want to, but what they've got here, this is the stuff. I'm a fan, but after all that fat and excess, I need a break. A palate cleanser maybe, some fruit by the side? No, I think a drive's in order. You see, on the outskirts of the city is a place that apparently crowds them in no matter what the distance. A short while away from Sringapatinam sits the Jai Bhuvaneshwari Military Hotel. Do note the spelling. It may look less than thrilling but apparently counts as its many customers, stars that extend all the way to Rajnikant. So I'm in good company as I take my seat and before I can even order, the food starts coming out. A lot of it. What is this? Jai Bhuvaneshwari Military Hotel a special uh, Tale Mamsa, Mutton Chops, Chicken Kurma, Kal Soup, a Brain, a Mutton Kaima, Ragi Bale. So the staples first, rice check, idli check and they're one of the reasons I came here in the first place, the Ragi Ball. Dark, dense, not terribly pretty but very, very tasty. I like the ragi ball very much. It's sort of nutty, it's um, dense, slightly sticky, and you know, most critically, it's strong enough to hold its own against the curry. Ah yes, the curries. Each of the dishes is interestingly served in the same gravy. The meat they use adds the only change in flavour. So while there is a bowl of it straight up, very nice over rice, I should probably lead with the chicken curry. It's good, it's very good, and easily the one that those more faint of heart and palate should opt for. If I haven't said it before, this curry, this gravy is all kinds of awesome. Then there's the mutton chop. Very rich, very meaty, but outdone in that department by the talai mamsa, the goat head curry. Not a whole one happily, but all those bits and bobs. It's a house speciality and as current Mr. Kumar's delightful nephew tells me, no less than I should have expected, this being a military hotel and all. We will make non sir. That's why it is called Bhuvaneshwari Military Hotel. Because it is here. So tasty like that. From all over the world they coming. All over the world they are coming. You know, and you know this is what it is. It's a place set on a busy highway where the food is strong, it is rich, it is greasy, it is spicy, it is certainly not subtle. And as for, you know, the meat, if there is a somewhat dubious distinction to it, you know, that's part of the fun, isn't it? She says manfully as she takes another bite. But it turned out I wasn't done. You can. Oh, brain. Huh? Our clima. Oh, my. Huh. Thank you. Thank you. Their kheema still as intense as I have come to expect and the bheja or brain curry. They take their name and their potency levels very seriously here. Alright, so what are my picks? Those of you who are fairly careful, shall we say, about what you eat, I would say the mutton chop and chicken curry are probably about as safe as you can hope to be. For the more adventurous ones, go nuts, try the goat head, the kheema, the brain, but you know, don't say I didn't warn you. And with that, I was done. Just as well I had to drive back because after all that meat, I needed the break. But of course, tea time meant my return to the Mysore trifecta of treats, the Mysore Bonda. And I was heading to the Das Prakash Hotel, a place with some amount of history behind it, for a bite. Yeah, this is one of the oldest hotel in Mysore. Okay. Built in 1943. Yeah. Seven odd decades behind them that should bode well for my first Mysore Bonda and it does. There they are, plump, deep fried, studded with spices. Taste and the aroma and the golden brown colour of it. Special in our hotel. I'm actually not entirely sure why they've chosen to call it a Mysore Bonda as opposed to just a vada. Um, it probably has something to do with the shape of it, possibly something to do with the light as air um, texture they give it or the incredible crust that surrounds it. Either way, vada, bonda, I'm having lots more. And I was getting to try numerous other treats too, this being the first of my high teas and all, the karabat, a seriously satisfying, perfectly kicky plate of semolina. If I had to sort of hazard a comparison, I would say it's what happened or what would happen if an upma 
and Akuri decided to have a beautiful love child. Sweets offered up their own surprises too. Some badam halwa that I say freely did not blow me away. What worked much much better was this, what they call halbai. Halwa is prepared from uh, coconut milk, jaggery, cardamom and all that put together and let it dry and cut it into pieces. Oh. I like it. Whether you do or don't, I suppose will boil down to how you like your payasam served. Runny or, you know, thick and congealed. I didn't think I would like it, but, you know, this is the fun. These are the surprises. So well satisfied with my afternoon's endeavours, I decided to fit in another. The Green Hotel is a building that's over a century old. It was formerly a palace too, a more modest one, I grant you, than most that my sore boasts, but still a palace. Hello, hello Anisha. Welcome to the Green Hotel. Thank you so much. The Green Hotel was uh, the Chitranjan Palace. Yes. It was built for the Maharaja's sisters. Okay. Yeah, so they stayed in this palace. And an extremely nice place for a princess to hang it is. It's very charming, it's very airy and honestly far less intimidating than some of the other family spaces. I'm sold enough that I can't wait to get to their cafe. We have the Malgudi coffee shop. Uh, it's inspired by R.K. Narayan's work. So Malgudi was a fictional town R.K. Narayan created and uh, it is said that Mysore was the inspiration behind the Malgudi town, fictional town. So yes, the Malgudi Cafe, how could I resist? The question is, in this space with its lovely shafts of sunlight, how exactly do they plan to celebrate that? R.K. Narayan was writing at a time when the British Raj was slowly coming to a decline. It was at the decline of an empire that apparently never saw the sunset. So to commemorate that period, that epoch in history, okay, we have integrated certain dishes that characterize and symbolize that uh, time period. And also probably in the fictional world of Malgudi, what people might have uh, had on their plates. Okay, I'll bite. Literally. The table fills up. First up, a salad of papaya and green mango, fresh light and a most welcome change of paste. There's a mushroom quiche that honestly boasts a pastry crust as good as any I've had anywhere. The credit goes to the, the girls that we have here. And, uh, they were trained by a baker from Chennai. He was actually a Frenchman. And uh, once he heard the story about the girls, uh, they all come from underprivileged backgrounds. So, uh, so we decided to provide them an alternative source of income. So yes, they have a mission and a commendable one. Mine, alas, is less noble, especially once I get my hands on the tender coconut water with honey, ginger and pepper. It's great. As you can no doubt tell by the speed at which I have finished this glass, um, I'm feeling about two degrees cooler for having had it, which means it serves its purpose beautifully. True to the Raj, there are cutlets, that old classic, the vegetable one, the kind that screams nostalgia. Along with it, the spicy laced chicken ones. Again, very tasty, best one had with their incredibly spicy pudina chutney. Right then, so far, so very good. Now what? Nothing symbolizes the southern Indian spirit or the fictional town of Malgudi as a nice, good, strong filter coffee. Ah yes, my first cup of Mysore coffee. Rich, robust, piping hot, smelling wonderful. I like my coffee where you can taste the roast and boy can you over here. This is, this is just a beautiful cuppa. Strong enough to dance on, yes, but a good, good cuppa. And then evidently I get dessert too, a slew of biscuits, simple and buttery and a variety of flavours, coconut, ragi and cashews. And just in case that wasn't enough, a thick slice of their very lovely lemon drizzle cake. This is good. And so as the sun starts to glow outside as I settle in with a cuppa, it's the perfect corner for a book, for a break. Which is what we're doing. After it, dinner. Mm -hmm.